I have some great news. In this video, we'll finally finish off that punch there. Also this bit and also that bit. I'm just generally trying to empty the area, I guess. And if there's any pieces I can put on the sawmill, we'll do that as well. I mean, check out this interesting log. Guy is just sitting here doing nothing and it's just growing new stuff on it. Very interesting log. Hmm. Who knows? Maybe by the end of the video we'll have some more trees. A bunch of trees will break down and we have to do those as well. Now I've been holding off on that work because of one reason. These things. Firewood totems. I just didn't have any room to put the firewood in. I did manage to get uh, five of them back from my neighbor. He emptied them finally. Took him about nine months to do that. Better late than never, I guess. But five will not cut it. Guessing like 10, probably like 15 there. <sighs> but after two months of waiting, so I struck a deal with this company. The company deals in um, some woodworking process. Either it was plywood or laminated wood, I can't remember. But the fact of the matter is they have a lot of these. And they collected 24 of these uh, totems for me. Just yesterday they got me up and said that your order is pretty much ready. So today a buddy of mine is gonna go pick them up and he's gonna haul them here. By the end of the day I'm gonna have 24 new totems. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna scrap these. I'm gonna try to use these as long as I can. Basically until they break apart or something, then I'm gonna throw them away. I'm just not gonna make any more of them. Currently I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with the white plastic. You know, I've been thinking maybe I can utilize those as roofs on the totems. But there are other uses for those things like collecting sawdust or something like that. So I'm not immediately gonna scrap them. Although they are gonna take a huge amount of space and currently I'm not sure where I'm gonna put them. But as always, figure that bit out when I need to figure it out. So the first thing that we need to do is to make some room here because 24 dotems, I need to put them right there. Kinda organize this area out a bit.
And the great thing about these pallets is that theoretically I can stack three of them on top of each other. I could save a lot more space by using these. With those I cannot stack three, definitely not. And I can't even stack like I did with these two, uh, one and two. For safety reasons I have to stack one, two and three. So basically I'm losing one space. But anyway, I got a pretty nice opening now. Should be able to fit all them totems. This guy, he was eating me from the back. I got the dude and I drew him here. Looks like um, one, two, three, four, five, five, six. Six ants are having a dime of their life. Bon appetit. The process will be pretty similar. There's only one thing that I need to change. So I have a couple of these customers that want the length to be 300 millimeters. So I need to adjust that a bit. But other than that, I think uh, we should just kind of get to work. I'm going to start from this spot. As the bio gets too big on this side, I need to move forward. I'm going to take a little turn and try to go through as many of them as possible. I think I need at least two passes here. Now you guys have told me a lot of upgrades I could add to this setup. Trust me, man, I would love to do them, but I'm not planning to keep this setup forever. Actually, I wanna build a new, I wanna build a new setup, something more efficient and safer. So upgrading this thing is kind of pointless if I'm gonna scrap it in the end.
ครับมีเป๊กอยู่นะไอ้บุตรสไลด์ติลต์ตัวนี้ปีก่อนฉันเห็นปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มีปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นที่ถนนที่มี
Whoa, check it out, guys. <laughs> Looks like there's a war going on. The ants are fighting off something. Some fly creatures, I don't know what they're called. Irrelevant. This is kind of game out of nowhere. Looks like they're retreating. Bunch of pussies. Really active now. All riled up and stuff. So interesting. I'm betting the plywood will hold up better than OSP did. Plus I figured maybe the slippery surface will help my gas. You know, this setup would be perfect for two and a half men. One guy for the cutting part, the second guy for handling the locks, just kind of helping out, I guess and the conveyor belt. Something that would take the cut pieces far, far away. Then this setup would actually be pretty efficient because I'm soloing right now, have to do everything myself and that everything that I've got so far, looking at about maybe three and a half, four hours of work. So if I can do this pile alone, I think I would be able to almost double this if I had two and a half men. By the way, I wonder how's Charlie doing. I hope he's okay. I love that guy. But uh, anyway, no rest for the wicked. Let's get our fat ass back to work.
Woof. Got the two biggest piles done. I mean, this pile here is probably smaller than uh, what I had there. I'm just amazed how efficient that thing really is. Oh no, it took me about... What about five hours yesterday? And about 30 minutes today. And all in all, I only used about nine liters of gasoline. Nine to ten liters on this entire pile. That's just insane. The little engine that good. Goodbye. But like I said, this would be a lot more efficient if I had two and a half man. The cutting process is the fastest and the most chilliest part of the entire job. Just feels amazing. But I have to spend like 75% of my time walking and picking up sticks. So that thing is just cutting air for most of the time. All of that is just unnecessary and wasted fuel. And this little upgrade that I did, or rather, let's call it a fix. Man, this was amazing. This slippery surface, this just upped the level by then. This was a very good choice. Now, next up, I'm probably gonna focus on splitting that pile and just stacking them into the gauge. There are a couple of more pieces down there, which I cannot access right now. Then I can focus on that pile there, but uh, before we do that, I think the old girl requires a bit of maintenance. From these two piles, I did get a lot of mud. And I think the blade is pretty dull at this point, so could do a bit of greasing. And I cannot remember when the last time I changed the oil on this thing, so I guess we could do that as well. Mm. Oh, and this thing broke off. My handle to transport the thing. I'm just gonna put it there. Seems to work. Maybe even better than that, honestly. So I might just kind of break that off as well. There has to be balance. You know, I'm not really sure how long I will keep this. Currently, I'm not 100% sure when I will even start my sawmill build. I mean, sorry, fire wood build. The new setup I was talking about earlier. So I might just need to use this for a couple of more seasons. I'm not really sure. So I figured maybe, maybe let's do some safety upgrades to this thing. Put the cover there. Maybe. I think the shaft is fine. Uh, remove that nut because that's kind of bothering me a lot. And I also wanted to install some type of a metal guard on this side. You know, right now, if the blade just decided to go bonanzas, fly off the shaft for whatever reason, it will fly through this. Like hot butter through, through knife. What? It will fly through this like hot another. What? The? Hot. Knife through better. You moron. So I figured if I put a piece of steel there, that's probably gonna help. Now I know I said I'm not gonna do any upgrades to this thing, but whatever. Let's do some upgrades to this thing. Then proceed with the firewood part. Finally got my new blade, guys. But are we willing to put it on yet? Uh, nope, not yet.
when I do finally disassemble this unit. Guys, make sure you remind me to recover all the screws. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with this. Guys, I've been thinking and I don't think I wanna install a card on this. It's gonna make things a bit worse because uh, you know, this cap here is not a lot and if I install a card in this area, it's gonna make the cap even smaller and cutting thicker logs gonna make that even worse. The bigger locks they are grinding against the belt sometimes that's why the belt is worn on the outside surface but if i add a guard on this location then uh, i'm gonna make it worse worse by meaning i can't cut bigger locks on this thing so i think i'm gonna skip that upgrade because i can't really think of anything else Obviously, the guard has to be here, so... For some reason it doesn't want to cut this pipe. I'm not sure, is it stainless steel? Wait a minute, I can test that out. Thanks to you guys, I know how. Oh look, that's stainless steel. Yeah, <laughs> magnet does not stick. I guess that's why. That's still a bit heavy, but it's a lot better than before. That is quite dark, because I haven't changed it for a while. Guys, I'm just learning from my former co-workers. That's how he greased his machines. Took a bit of grease with his fingers, swiped that crap all over the place, and then bragged that, 
Hey, I greased the entire machine. Now pay me extra. So I'm gonna use the previous style, I guess. Split the thing and immediately stack it in the box. That is the most efficient way to do this part. Just split it, box it. Now because the locks are considerably shorter this time, I'm gonna use a wooden spacer. In order to save a bit of time. Eventually this will fail, but um, you know, I can just take another one. This lock splitter also has this manual lock thing. You can just kind of screw a bolt in there somewhere and then lock it down. But bro, that's junk. It never really stays on its position. It always comes loose. And uh, not all of the locks are the same length. Most of them are, but some, for example, that one are longer. So I need to adjust that too much. The wooden block uh, is a lot faster. And I'm gonna use a separate box to store some weird sizes in, like this. Don't really wanna sell this to the customer. I'd rather try to keep quality lumber in there. Just kinda throw the crap in the box. And I can definitely use this for myself somewhere, I guess. Oh, I need a hole as well. Some bream hydraulic fluid down there. I'm gonna make a quick pallet for it as well. But I think that's it guys. It's gonna take me at least a day to go through this pile of junk. So I'm gonna draw some music there. Try to wrap it up in about three minutes or so. Let's get to work.
Finally, man. I thought that's never gonna end. I was just splitting lumber, then peeked over my shoulder. I swear, man, the pile just kept getting bigger. So demotivating. Took me a bit longer than... A day in the half. I hate these gnarly pieces. And all you get from them is just a bunch of unsexy firewood. Dude, I just split the entire log. Don't even know what I got. Bunch of fibers. Useless fibers. Too bad my eye sockets are not that far apart. This could make a great mask. There we go guys, the most biggest and probably the most challenging log I have. Now if this thing can do it, then uh, it, it split everything. Now the single log was a match for that thing. Oh well. Let's go wake up the vertical three phase boat anchor. I thought the moment will never arrive. Utno, si. Are you ready for some action?
No way, man. What a shocking turn of events. Wow. I did not expect this. No way, man. Now, I've been kind of brainstorming ideas what to put on uh, the top. Been thinking about that and actually you know, covering the top area is not the best plan. Because stacking firewood in the cage from the top is a lot better than trying to go through that hole. It's doable, but a lot of bending is required and um, that's not very good. I want to use something I have. Now I could use those, but... But I realized this is actually a very good container. I could use these for collecting all sorts of stuff. This is a very good example right here. Just some trash that you don't really want to sell to the customer. Well, actually, I think uh, people who use wood fire boilers, I think they would buy this stuff at a heartbeat. Maybe at a discounted price, perhaps. Those fireplaces are huge. They can just, you know, take that chunk, throw it in there and it will burn. No problem. I just need to build a pallet for the thing and I have a nice box to collect stuff. So I don't really want to destroy this. But maybe if I can get like four pieces from uh, one box, then it's not that bad of an idea. Some of you will definitely tell me to cut them diagonally. But uh, dude, how am I supposed to stack them on top of each other then? I cannot do that. Meter. So the face panel will cover most of it, but the sides will still get damp. It will cover like, well, yeah, most of it, but not the most ideal solution. Yet it will be the cheapest, undoubtedly. Now I'm gonna cut one up. Just gonna see how it does. Just gotta pick the one with minimal grab in it. Looks like only one piece covers it pretty nice. The rest are pretty much crap. Now, I could even use these, maybe like tape them together, secure them with zip ties or something. Yeah, I'm not really sure right now. I'm gonna sit on it a bit. I'm gonna try to make up my mind. In the meantime though, Santa Claus offered, offered to help cut this pile. He can only help me one day. He has to go to Finland on uh, the next day. So I don't really want to lose that opportunity. Hopefully we can plow through this pile tomorrow and then everything is well.
You know what, guys? I think I'm starting to hate firewood. It's kind of starting to piss me off. Honestly, honestly though, I cannot wait until I finish. I'd rather do that. 100 times I would rather do that. But that's just something that needs to be done. That thing came loose and uh, I guess there's a screw here somewhere or what, I'm not sure. All I heard was a metal clunk and now the blade is off. So I guess I just gotta keep my eye on this thing so if it starts rocking back and forth too much then then those sophisticated pins down there are loose.
Looks like this thing is about to fall apart. Just need to add more screws. And I thought that pile was big. The hell, man. Oh! More wood.
Guys, I think I may have a problem. Wood addiction type of problem. Is that the thing even? But anyway, I think I'm pretty much finished with the cutting. Well, almost actually. I will get a little bit more from there. By the way, Santa Claus, dude, helped me out a lot here. Basically, this entire pile, about 10 liters of gasoline and maybe five six hours of work doing it alone i probably would have stayed here for like two days because this is definitely bigger than um, what i had there and i was pretty sure this is gonna be smaller boy was i wrong now i'm thinking though i will have an issue later like i don't have enough gauges yeah i ordered a buttload at the start of this video but i think i have like 12 remaining right now so i already am uh, contacted the seller who sold me that bunch maybe they will be able to get more because i really don't have an option to store this but luckily i don't have to think about it right now i think i'm gonna go and focus on the sawmilling side a bit this pile here is gonna be a bit more exciting i guess because i want to cut those three pieces as well i have no idea how it, it doesn't fit in my sawmill we'll cross that bridge when we get that far right now though gonna need to focus on that but i don't really have any place to put my sawmill material that bunker there is completely filled so i should probably start with this thing it's a permanent place where i want to store this that place has not been built out yet so i can temporarily put them on the attic of the main house where i usually store lumber i think they are dry enough i'm not really sure they've been here for four months five maybe what do you think guys are they dry enough i think they are i'm not 100 percent sure but i think they should be good enough so this is my lumber corner actually all around i can put some dry lumber even there but um i think it's a bit of a mess right now okay that's better now, I only want the dimensional lumber here. I'm not gonna put the stupid, pointless live age boards here. That is just hopelessly dumb. Plus, I don't have any room anyway. So, I want this stuff. That stuff can stay. I don't really care. Maybe I can. Uh... Maybe if I remove all of this, then I have enough space here to also include this and whatever I will get from there. Plus, I hate this situation when I need. When I need the bees, for example, I need like 
two by six, whatever. It's always buried under somewhere. That's really annoying. So I would actually benefit from uh, removing these and sorting them out. And that actually went pretty well. I thought the entire bio is gonna collapse somewhere. I would have probably cried. Honestly guys, I cannot wait until I get my permanent woodworking workshop. It's a huge dream of mine. For those who don't know, then the barn I have, uh, a separate building. I wanna turn that into a woodworking workshop. Just keep all the stupid dust and lumber in one location. Kinda makes sense. Right now I have no other option to just put it in the main house's attic. But in the new workshop, well, I could also utilize the attic there. There's plenty of space. The place I'm storing them right now is quite a bad idea because I have the main workshop just downstairs. Lots of sparks and crap occur there, so probably a bad idea to put these sticks here. But uh, I don't really have any other option right now. Luckily, when I did the workshop renovation downstairs, I insulated the entire shop with some fireproof insulation and also fireproofed the paint. So hopefully that will do something. Another thing I hate about this setup is that I have to manually lift them all up there one by one. It's a lot of hard work and takes hours. In the new shop though, I want to build some, some extra outside terrace area where I could lift the lumber up to and at the attic just um, stack them one by one that's like removing the middleman there is a lot more room here though in the main house to store lumber but like i said eventually i want to get rid of all the lumber in this area and um, renovate the entire attic insulate it if need be make sure cats can't get up here and only put cool stuff up here like antiques and unique furniture for example, the Soviet chair family. My idea is to rebuild the floor 
because uh, of it being out of level and the bug issues. Then build a bunch of shelves on the sides. Also add a lift and um, yeah, basically use this area as dry storage. Now neatly stacked. Doesn't look like that much. But I think there's still about two tons of wood here. And hopefully the floor will hold. Probably shouldn't do that. I'm kind of bouncing that area. But we do have um, this piece here, straight under the board. It's a, it's a pretty thick mama. And the lumber itself is very close to the edge. So I think it's fine, shouldn't break. I really like how they have been sorted now. All the two by sixes here, bunch of four by fours there, and two by fours there. Oh, and all the two inch boards are over there. So everything is nicely sorted out. That is very good. My bad. I only know how to break things. Basically all you need to survive in the middle of nowhere. Bunch of homemade lumber and a crap ton of screws. Job well done. I'm only gonna make posts, like six by six posts, if I can, maybe something smaller. I don't think I will need two by fours, like ever. I should be good on that. So let's quickly post these. WDF looks like a bunch of crap. <laughs> Yo, how am I even supposed to cut this piece? Goes that way, then turns that way, then up to space. What the hell happened when this tree was growing? Thing is kind of all over the place. Pretty interesting. Yo, I don't think I'm gonna cut that one. Kind of pointless. Wouldn't it even. 
I don't think I can even get one slab from this. If I dried, I would just end up chopping it up to firewood. Um, it's a pretty interesting base. Maybe I will use it someday, somewhere. But everything else, uh, oak, very funky as well. But I think I can cut at least these. And then we need to figure out something about these three. This looks pretty rough. I'm not sure if this is even worth it. Giant hole on the other end. But maybe it will be a cool epoxy slab. The more holes, the better. A lot of holes. Very good. Looks like we got a giant stress fracture. And this happens because the the branch on the, on an oak tree gets so thick and so long. So the wood just kind of pops from the center. It's been open for a really long time as well, because you can see from here the tree has tried to, you know, cover up the crack somewhat. That that there is new growth. Yeah, trees actually don't heal themselves. They just try to cover up the defects. I'm gonna cut at the straight line. Just try to plank this thing. Hopefully there's no stress in that crack. Might explode on me. You never know with these things. It's highly unlikely, but still possible. Sadly, the end popped open. No surprise there, to be honest. There isn't really anything holding the thing together. So maybe down there we have something stronger, but... You know, I don't want this uh, beast to break into, so... Just gonna throw a plate down there. Still broke about. This probably looks like junk to most of you, but maybe it is. I'm not really sure. To me, it's not though. Let's uh, let's check that piece out. Seems pretty badass. Five. Ay ay ay. Where coxes? Spalted oak. What a hot mama. I like it very much. <sighs> but I think this one will also break in half. I should probably change the blade out soon. I'm starting to notice some minimal waves. That usually happens when I run the blade for too long. But I'm gonna, gonna push it a bit longer. Definitely gonna finish this log. I'm kind of hoping that uh, the blade will survive. Uh, enough for these four pieces. At least these are not very thick. And uh, for those, I'm gonna put the brand new blade on. 
that's my goal right now. So hopefully it will keep cutting. So I wonder what we got. Should be interesting. pretty good especially like this end where the two points come out don't know the proper word for that sorry two points will do <sighs> no idea what i'm gonna use this for who knows maybe somebody wants to buy this highly unlikely but still possible Thank the holy cow, there's only four of them. Luckily, you guys don't have to endure this, so. Luckily, guys, I did not even need to endure this for a long time because I just decided to cut most of them into firewood. I figured it's just a lot more trouble than I'm getting back at lumber. Now, before getting into huge logs, I figured let's also cut the two bottom feeders next to the panther mill. I ended up canting these into 10 by 10 and 8 by 8 posts, hoping to use them somewhere. Not sure right now where, but we'll figure that bit out one day. They were nice logs, straight and stuff, but very dirty. A lot of mud on them. Maybe I should get a stronger pressure washer with a turbo nozzle for this area. Might speed things up a bit. What do you think, guys? Washing them is 100% worth it. Considering I can do about 30 3 meter long logs on a single blade, then those numbers kind of speak for themselves.
I don't know, guys. I can hear this voice in my head trying to tell me, like, what are you hoping to get from this? It's essentially a chunk. It's a rotten, rotten birch log. Oh, yes, Mio. What a fat ass. So clunky as well. There seems to be some type of um, nest in there, but I'm not sure if anybody is home. I don't think so. So the highest I can go is 45, which is gonna be here somewhere. I think that's fine. Yeah, it might even clear. I'm not sure, maybe a little bit will get in the way there. Whatever, let's try. I still haven't changed the blade. I'm not gonna do it with the first cut. If the thing is like mostly rotten, then I don't think um, that blade will have any issues. Okay, well, dead end. Apparently my eyesight is worthless. So do options. Either hack this away with the chainsaw or try to make the thing go more. I think uh, I just need to pull out the angle grinder a bit. But there's a support beam there. Mm. You know, I guess I can do like a mild upgrade here because there's definitely some extra travel space. You could get like this much, which is enormous. Make sure that I support that and that with this. Then I can got a chunk out of there. So typical. When you try to dismantle something you welded, you're always gonna be like, why did you do it so well? Oh, 
I probably should have not cut from here. Just focus on there. My bad. Oh, what? Looks like this end is further that way than that one. Yo, I did not even notice that. So in retrospect, we got like this much more play. It's well worth upgrade. Good job, Hans. Basically, we did not achieve anything with this upgrade. It was a very mild gain. I do have a slight idea. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, though. Oh yeah, I think I got an extra meter there. Hopefully it will clear now because I don't have any more room to go. I'm kind of maxed out on that end as well. Somehow I made it through. Hear that? It's hollow under here. I'm guessing the courtesy of that hole. Yeah, but the spalting, it looks pretty cool. I think, I think this is not worth it, but uh, let's continue anyway.
Dude, the smell is so bad. It's just pure rot smell. Man, this is just so bad. But let's continue. I think this piece is a bit better. The first piece that I got, I think that was the drunk part. And this section is the next part. So maybe it has less rot in it. I don't know. There is actually wood there. Wow. Guys, I found Mordor. I think nobody's home. So this definitely felt stronger than the last lock. The last one, uh, you could hit, you could literally feel that you hit these uh, soft pockets, and uh, that was a lot easier to mill. But this is hard throughout the entire lock. So I have my hopes up. That is manageable. It's like perfect epoxy plank. Remove the rut and fill the void with the epoxy. It uh, seems manageable as long as it doesn't break apart. Yeah, I think you'd.
I'm not sure if I should secure it or throw it away. Because I drew a couple of planks uh, away that I got earlier. They were, well, they basically just broke into do and I did not want to deal with that crap. This, uh, this will break into do as well. Holy crap, man. Dude, this thing is just huge. I would I would actually love to flip the thing and plank it the other way. So the end of the blank will go in like two directions. That would be really cool. But dude, I probably can't even fit this. I need to cut this off, so um, cannot do that. I mean, the thing's wider than my bandsaw mill tracks. What is up with that? This one smells pretty bad as well. Got some premium mushrooms growing on it. Oh man, this is huge. By the way, I know exactly where that log is from. Thing is from behind the cabin, but I can't remember if I removed the stump or not. Oh, I think I dug out the stump. Bummer. But anyway, the tree was here. It was right behind the cabin. And actually a little piece of that tree a little bit of that is inside this cabin. So uh, this piece. This piece is also from that tree. But it's obviously from higher up somewhere. Because this is not super wide. This actually goes quite deep. Looking maybe about halfway through actually. And on the sides I don't really see much of any wood. You know, I should probably cut this piece off. It's, it's totally pointless. There's no firewood even here. It's just, uh, it's just very soft mud. Well, one thing's for sure. This crap just keeps going. I'm almost out of luck. <laughs> you know what? Let's just kind of stop with this. Um, I mean, there is some lumber here and here, here and there. So, just quickly slap this and see what's what. Guys, I was beginning to doubt, but... Dude, this end is totally worth it.
Just, just ignore that crap there. That's what matters. Especially like this dark line. And this is not rot. This is, this is something else. I'm not sure. And this area looks amazing. I can, I can get like maybe one or two more cuts there. And I think I have one more there somewhere. So cutting this was definitely worth it. I mean, you could build something out of this, like a coffee table or something like that. It looks, this is, this is rock solid wood. Just sad that it's um, not very long. <sighs> Been hacking this for like freaking two hours now. Yet I think it was worth it. I get my promise guys, no more logs left, except for that gnarly piece. And I'm gonna keep these two, just in case if I need to park something here. Believe it or not, I already have a spot for that thing, a new project. But in order to do that project, I need um, one, two, three, four, five, about five more of them. So I'm gonna do that next year. As for this video, Obviously, we're not finished yet. You know, I hate the mess, so I'm gonna clean this up. Hopefully, I can clean everything up. I really, really hate the mess.
I guess they're homeless now. Whoops, my bad. And these things are so camouflagey. You can't even find them anymore. Oh, there's one. Let's go to your new home, buddy. Entire castle. Right here. Oh, there you go. Cousin. Come on. Stop being a dude. Oh, is it over now? Yeah, I started to like this stuff. So did you, apparently. Damn, I'm good. Oh, by the way, Mr. Santa Claus, if by any chance you're watching this video, I present you my chainsaw, but you already know about this. So please take a hard look at it. Maybe even snap a picture or two. It will last longer because this is the last time I will lend you my chainsaw again. You will never see this. I will bury this in concrete if I have to because all of this all of this and about half of that is because of you I had to do it because of you because you had itchy fingertips wanted to cut some lumber for me I wasted like an entire week on this I could have done something more productive like pick my nose for example but no I had to grind this crap for an entire week. Not cool, bro. The, this kind of just kind of 
got annoying pretty fast. Kind of, kind of kept looking behind me and the bio, it just kind of never ended. It kept going. That was so annoying. No wonder I stuck at basketball, man. I still have a bit left to split, but uh, these are... Well, I wanted to show you something. Uh, plus, there are a couple of them here that just refuse it to split. So we'll have to do something about those things. And by the way, I did a couple of upgrades to this thing. I'm not sure if I talked about it. So before I made this uh, type of limiter, it works works extremely well a lot better than what came from the factory that is just a pointless thing mm -hmm. oh i got fed up with these things falling off dude they installed m6 bolts m6 bolts to hold these uh what the crap ever you would call them in place let's just call them things i have no idea but yeah they installed m6 bolts man thinking like there's gonna be no pressure on this well, if you split a lock, sometimes that crook block can actually push down on this part. Those M6 bolts are gonna go sayonara in the first attempt. Man, I tried to like dreadlock them in there. Th things just kind of kept falling off after 10 minutes. Got fed up with it. Welded that shot, that shot, and added a thick plate back there. You know, they seem to be holding <sighs> for at least three days. They've been there and uh, they haven't fallen off so i guess that fix worked i added a little hammer holder there because this is a very essential tool considering uh, this uh, lock splitter now it doesn't do full cycle this uh, push plate it does not go here it actually stops somewhere here that is extremely stupid sure you will get like 90 percent of the lock split but the other 10 percent they will be stuck here they yeah, th this thing should go further. Now, I did not upgrade it any further because I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this next year. Maybe I will have my new setup up and running, but if not, then I'm gonna do that little upgrade. I'm gonna make the push plate a bit longer. And um, did one more upgrade then. Winglet. Made it a bit, made it that it will sit a bit higher. And the issue was that uh, if these wings sat a bit lower, then I would not get like a perfect four-way split. The two bottom ones would be considerably smaller than the top ones. So this way, I will get perfect size from the bottom. And if the top is too big, then I can just re-split it. Now that is, that is perfect size. No need to adjust it any further. Also guys, there is a hidden future. Mr. Winglet has a hidden future, which I did not design. It just kind of happened. You know that some of these logs, they kind of tend to explode, especially if the log is somewhat dry or completely dry. And when the first split happens, the log just pops in too. The two halves go flying. Sometimes they can even fly like five meters. Winglet actually prevents that. So when the first split happens and uh, the explosion occurs, then the secondary wedge catches that explosion. You know, I left some pieces there. Maybe we can demonstrate. I mean, don't let me down. I only have three more logs. Why all of a sudden nobody is exploding, yo? You guys did not mind exploding like five minutes ago. You're ruining my scene. Bunch of clown wood. Literally turned the camera off and the next piece exploded. What is going on? I don't know. Bunch of crap.
basically something like that, but multiply it by then. Somehow I split everything, even the ones that would not split before. And um, none of them exploded. But I guess you're going to get the idea. When the explosion occurs, the two pieces fly against the secondary wedges. And those things just kind of catch the wood. So it would not go flying. That's actually been very helpful. Now there were a couple of species of lumber here. Um, one was extremely difficult to split. Well, actually rather it was not a splitting problem, but you know, handling it later or breaking the thing apart. Even if you tried full strength, you could not rip this open. The stupid fibers, man. I'm not sure what type of wood species it is. It looks like alder, but it is not alder. I'm guessing it's some type of a hard wood. So maybe I can find a good example for you. Yeah, it looks like alder, but man, it, this is not alder. Alder, alder, this is alder. No, that's not alder. This is alder. Now, alder splits very well, no problem at all. But this thing, it splits, but it does not fully split. It leaves these stupid fibers hanging. And that thing not doing a full cycle does not help. By the way, you probably noticed I ran out of totems. Yeah, the 24 that I bought, all stacked full, nothing left. I'm really glad that I was able to stack a dirt row as well. This will help me to save space. And about the... About the roof setup. Now, I'm not really sure if this is the best option, but it seems about the cheapest option. I got a buttload of those, so I can nicely, if need be, saw them up again. And then I can use this just cheap plastic to cover the sides. I think this will work just fine. Now I got about 20, 21 totems plastic wrapped with a single roll of plastic. And uh, you know, considering a roll of plastic is about $6, then I think not bad. Now one thing to note is that you know, moisture can't really escape from the top. So maybe I could just put the plastic And put it like that, just kind of cover it up only. Yeah, probably it would help. Give a bit more room to breathe. Now this is just temporary anyway, uh, because in the future I do plan to store these things in the woodshed. Then I don't need any cover for the top. I can just you know, stack them and park them in the woodshed. Do not need to worry about anything else. So here right now I have 24 plus 29. That's a lot, that's more than I had last year. Plus that pile, I'm not really sure how much we got here. I'm guessing about 10. Yeah, I need to order more totems. Actually I sent a couple of emails and even um, phoned the company which sold me those totems. Sadly nobody replied. But I heard through the grapevine that they're currently on a collective vacation. So that means uh, they're all, the entire firm is on a vacation. I don't really know how long, but usually those things are like two or four weeks. So I probably won't be able to get any new totems for a bit, but yeah, I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna keep this pile here and just sell it as it is. People can uh, come here with their trailer they can just load it up from the pile and I think I will just kind of sell this pile like that. By the way, these things are just amazing. I even decided to keep these and not use them on the wood totems because check it out, these are 
the perfect roof for these things. So I wasn't really sure what I'm gonna do with these plastic containers, but man, I could use these to collect all sorts of stuff. For example, I got these uh, really odd shapes and sizes, which I don't really want to split. Already got two of these, so that's great. And here I put some rotten, it's mostly rotten wood or bark. I wonder what else I can use these for. You know, super mom did ask me, hey son, could you please make me a couple of containers for ash collection? I'm on it, super mom. Yo, this one is pretty empty. I'm not sure if I explained you guys what was actually held in these things. I can't even remember when I started this video. It's been so long. So let's go over it again. So basically two items. Wood glue and hardener. So that thing there is uh, the glue part. Hardener is a bit more white. And uh, most of them were actually empty. And most of them were like this. Just very little left on the bottom. But dude, some of them, some of them had a bit of glue in it. Mm, for example, this box here it probably had like 100 liters of glue in it. It's kind of bustling, to be honest, because the glue was okay. It was not, um, you know, I know for a fact that um, you can use this glue until it kind of hardens. So it doesn't really cure without the hardener, but if it's free flowing like it is here, then this glue is totally fine. You can still use it. It is like epoxy, it will not harden on its own, but um, eventually, mostly thanks to the outside temperature, it will kind of, I guess, jam up, sort of harden, but not completely. And then you cannot use this thing anymore. So, uh, any of you guys want to buy some condensed milk? You just have to be quick with your order. It's probably gonna be a bit hard to swallow soon. What's up? I just kind of bored everything in here. I mean, I really have nothing to do with stuff. This this type of glue is primarily used for plywood making, and um, uh, I cannot make plywood here, so it looks still soft. Although I mix it in with the hardener. Wow, nice and stuff. Yeah, I'm not really sure what to do with it. It will probably harden eventually. It will turn into basically rubber, I guess. But um, even then I, I still have no use for it. So I probably have to take it to the recycle center. But knowing East Europe, I mean, those guys at the um, recycle center, they will probably charge me an insane amount of money in order to hand it over. And then they will proceed to flush the thing down the toilet. Most likely. Welcome to East Europe.
by the way, I only got from the inner side. Do not cut from here. Because if you cut from here, the box will lose its strength. It will kind of wobble around all over the place. It won't be able to hold anything. If you make the hole like so, then the box will keep its strength. And I guess it doesn't bubble that much. This is the this is the hardener totem. The smell is really unbearable. It's like it's like really really hard varnish, or I don't even know how to describe it. Just gotta hold my breath when I go in there. That's white man. Yo, I wonder when this gets full. I'm guessing never. We'll probably die like 10 times before that thing gets full. But don't worry guys, I can uh, just kind of grab it from this side with the Bobcat 5 million because that's how long it's gonna probably take for it to get full. And I wonder what else I could store in those boxes. Does anybody wanna buy a decent tank rope? I will make you a discount. Once this thing gets full, I could just drag it out of here and go just go and dump the load at the bonfire location. This is pure wood, so you can nicely just burn it. This was a good idea. I wonder, maybe I could use those as uh, as my rock boxes as well. What what do you guys think about that? That seems kind of on the iffy side, but maybe just maybe. And this thing is filled with pretty decent uh, firewood pieces and you know it keeps its shape it does not it does not fall apart you collecting rocks in a box it was a really good idea because if you remember for my swing project i used all the rocks i had but uh, these wooden boxes man they just kind of they fall apart they cannot handle rocks i guess they will work until they will just kind of break apart and then they will not work anymore so I'm looking for an alternative solution for my rock boxes. And I think I have my solution right there. What do you guys think about that? As for the firewood though, I think it's time to wrap up this stupid video. At least I finished all the goals that I set out to do. I got all the firewood done. Sadly, not all of it is boxed, but that's not really an issue. 
and I got all the saw milling material finished. So right now I have nothing left. Everything is finished. That is very good because I'm gonna dry and clear this whole area up. This whole area, guys. I wanna turn it into like a, well, like a parking lot, I guess. I just wanna clear this whole area up. I want some nice open space here. Space where I can do firewood, saw milling, soil screening, rock crushing, everything like that. I wanna do all those things, but I just lack the space. So my idea is I'm gonna just clear everything up here and just make it into a nice flat area where I could do all sorts of projects. On that side, I'm planning to build some type of a shed where I could uh, park that thing under it and continue that project there. I'm gonna make it big enough so Joseph can fit next to it. And I also want a grease pit at least on one side. Because Joseph, it is so close to the ground. I need some type of grease pit if I wanna work under it. The gear of it is so high, you can just host birthday parties under that thing. But Joseph's belly is so close to the ground that um, definitely want a grease pit for this thing. That will help out a lot. And the sawmill shed. I was just gonna demolish this, build a new shed, probably make it smaller. This one is way too big. And I'm gonna position it to that side. So I would get that open area plus have the sawmill there. So it's a really cool project. I cannot wait for that to happen, but everything is riding on Joseph right now. I need to get that thing working. If I can't get Joseph back in action, then there is no chance of me getting these trees away from the power line. Joseph is the key because I obviously need to remove the stumps as well. So yeah. As for this video though, I'm gonna wrap it up now. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next week. Bye. I should build a zip line out of that thing.